Okay, today's uh, talk is going to be about the genus Acerum, or as we know them uh, commonly, wild gingers. So this is what a wild ginger looks like. Now we just worked on this clump a little yesterday for our class. They're known because of the fragrance. So let me pass that around. And it does smell like ginger. It's sort of an anise, so it's been used for uh, for many years. Uh, the current thing that uh, that wild gingers are really uh, gaining popularity for are for cancer drugs. They're they're doing a phenomenal amount of research. Most of it coming out of China uh, for uh, for the cancer fighting properties, and it's really fascinating. Part of the problem they're running into because it's been a medicinal plant for years in China is trying to separate the species because what happens over in China is the collectors go out and they just gather whatever they can find. Well, one might cure you and a different one might kill you. And it's been a little tricky. So they're now actually doing DNA work over in China for medicinal value for these. Uh, some serums are evergreen, some are deciduous. So this would be an evergreen one. If you were here yesterday before we butchered it, it's full of leaves. So one of the neat thing about them is they uh, really give you a great winter interest in the garden. What we do is come in right before they flower and we remove the, the leaves in the center. So come over here and you'll see what we've done. We simply will go in like this and we'll just sort of pull those leaves out. And this is just getting ready to come into flower here. Matter of fact, some of these flowers are fully open. Let's see if I can pull one out. In rural North America, they call these pigs at a trough because this one looks very much like little pigs. Some can be as big as this big. So some of the flowers are really quite large. These are interesting in that they are pollinated by pill bugs or sow bugs. If you know those little things, roly polies that roll around, that's what pollinates them. So if you get a chair and pull up around here, you can sit there and watch and they go in one and they just roll around in there and then they come back out. If you take that out, you can see this is the male and female pieces are right in there, right on that. This is all just made to uh, attract people to buy them. That's, but that's the male and the female, if you can look, if you got really good eyes. And then the seed form right down here in the base. So once it finishes flowering, we can actually come in and break that apart and it's full of seed. Really small. They're just starting to form now. But you come in later. They never get very big, but you can grow these from seed. Most people grow these from divisions. They're very easy from divisions. If we were to divide this clump now, I could probably get uh, probably somewhere around 80 to 85 plants out of that one clump. Uh, we've got actually, we just did a video online if you're on YouTube. Go over there and look for dividing the serums, and you'll see what we do. I just pulled this off yesterday as I was <laughs> dividing it. That is a division right there. So that's all you need to get you a new plant going. So that's see, there's your new leaves, and there's, there's the roots, and there's the base. And that's the part that's the key. It's having that, that base right there where the leaves join. As long as you got that, you got a new plant. So you can uh, come in and... Stick that in just like that. And that's all you need to do. You make it, look so easy. it is so easy. <laughs> it really is. People make gardening look so complicated. They they give you all these rules and things you have to do and this and that. And it's not that complicated. It's I don't know why they make it seem that way, but it really isn't. So you can take that whole clump up if I was wanting to dig more up. The, the, the soil, okay, now there you go, there you go. Now, you're getting the soil right. So I'm just, see how easy that was? I just popped out two, three more plants right there. See, each of those, that one's got its flowers on it. So all of those are ready to go. So you can either leave the leaf on it or cut the leaf off if you wanted to cut that off. If you want to stick them in pots, you can stick them in pots. They're not really easy to grow in pots unless you have really good soil in a pot. That's probably the one thing I would tell you don't try is sticking them in a container because if you don't have really, really high-end, top quality soil, they will die in a pot. But they're great in the ground. But you're right. You want good soil in the ground. So each of those then could be planted 
I'm going to stick that right in the ground, just like that. So that's not the ginger you use for cooking, right? No, not the one you use for cooking. This is the, uh, whoops. Yep, there's a lot of things called ginger, which is why we don't use common names, or try not to, because, uh, yeah. Ginger beer. Ginger beer, yes. Yeah, I don't know if you can make beer out of that or not. I can't say that I've tried. All right, let's look at a few more. <laughs> Would be interesting. Let's see. I think we have a, some over here. Aren't they nice? All right, so again, we're looking for the flowers, and they generally hide under the leaves, and there it is. So we just pull those leaves away, and there's the flower. And I'll just, just sacrifice this one to... You don't care if the leaf is there. Nope, nope. The, the new leaves will come. So the new leaves are, right, are already starting to form. So new leaves are ready. So because I want to see the flowers. I mean, that's why I grow them. Uh, I grow them for the leaves. I grow them for the flowers. But I will, all those old leaves that have any kind of damage, see how that one got a little damage? Just pop that off and then we just let the flowers show some are very full of rivers and some whoops only have one flower so that one's that one's got a little beat up but sort of oh yeah they're really fascinating plants and if you make it around to the front garden there's really some beautiful ones with white and purple patterns in those you can pass that around what is that pollinated by uh, sow bugs, little roly polies. Really? Mm hmm. So you can see as we go through, there's a lot of smaller ones, and these have not been in the ground very long. Generally, from a single division, you're probably in good soil, you're probably looking at about three years to have a really nice sized clump. So let's go find some more in flower. Yeah, that one looks really nice. So just like we did on that one, if you look down here at the base, hanging around, the flowers are just starting to form. So some are later, some are, uh, they bloom anywhere from October really through uh, May. So you've got a very long bloom season. Each species is a little different. Now in almost all cases, the natural color of the flowers is purple. So what we're always looking for are the oddballs, especially what we know of as albinos. So this is uh, one of the Chinese ones that we pulled out, this really interesting albino form. So come take a look at the flowers on this. So I've already come in and taken the foliage off. So that's got, I don't know, probably 150 flowers there on one clump. And so again, we could divide that. There's easily 250 plants in there. So it, they're really incredible shows. All right. Now this is one of our natives. This is a Serum Harperi. This is a native to down in Georgia. And this one makes a ground cover. Most of the ones we've looked at so far were clumpers. So some clump and some run, depends on the species. But see how nice that looks all through the winter time? And that one will be flowering in about another six or eight weeks. It's a little later than some of the other ones we've looked at. Let's go down to Mystic Creek area. I think I've got some nice ones down there. And considering these leaves have been through an entire winter, the leaves actually look pretty good. But we'll be taking those off soon so we can see the flowers, which are not open yet. But this is one of the Asian ones, the Serum Asprum. So this is why we really like them. In foliage, they look very similar to a plant called Cyclamen, which you see behind you. And see how very similar the foliage is? Now, Cyclamen are summer dormant. These are actually go all year. But if you see the two, a lot of people look at them and think, well, that looks the same. And it does look very similar, but they're completely unrelated. 
If you come back by for our spring open house, this will be in flower. This is a serum nobilissimum. This has the largest flower of any of the serums. Each flower is that large. It's uh, really incredible. We've got uh, actually three offerings uh, in the nursery. We finally bulked up enough. And this one does run. So this is run. It's made a three foot patch in about 12 years. So it's not fast. And then up here, we've got a really interesting looking one in bloom. This is one from the uh, Japanese islands off the southern coast of Japan. If anybody's ever heard of Okinawa and Amitachi, that's where this is from. And there's actually uh, seven of the rarest of serums in the world are from those islands down in the southern Ryukas. So you see how different that looks. This is a serum Hatsushima. And the leaves are just coming out, so we've taken the old leaves off. So it's really a fascinating plant. So of all the acerum, you can pass that around. The U.S. has the smallest number of species after Europe. Europe only has one. The U.S. has now, I think we're probably up to about 8 to 10. Uh, Japan and China have the majority of them. Uh, that's really the area that's just loaded with a serum. So they are all around the world. Okay, here's another. We just took the foliage off and take a look at the flowers on this. This is a serum porphyrinotum. This is another of the Chinese species. So that's got a good, uh, probably 25, 30 flowers in there. So the flowers are really ornamental if you just get rid of the old leaves so you can see them. And getting rid of the leaves doesn't have any effect on the plant because it's already got the new leaves built inside there. Already got the energy. So they're just waiting to pop. Oh, oh you're going to get in the middle of this. Thank you. All right. <laughs> okay, uh, we can walk up the front if anybody wants to see more. If you've got any questions, we'll be glad to entertain those here.